lady, though. Brave lady. Uh, right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a bonus act. Are you ready for your second act of the evening? All right, you know what to do when I say his name. You give it all you got. And please welcome to the stage, Christian Talbot. <laughs> Good evening. I always start all of my gigs with an OCD joke. It's not because I want to. You can probably already tell from my accent that I'm really needy. Uh, I'm from Dublin. I'm from Dublin. I'm from a place in Dublin called Coolock. And Coolock is known for two things. Coolock is known for the Cadbury's Chocolate Factory. And it's known for the Tato Crisp Factory. Yeah. And my school was slap bang in between those two factories. And an awful lot of the kids who went to my school, uh, their parents worked in either one of those factories. And you would know those kids. Because like at, where, uh, at lunchtime, whereas I would have like a, a, a sandwich and an apple, uh, they'd have diabetes. Um, <laughs> Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing when you hear a song that you've known for years and years and you realise you've misheard the lyrics all that time, isn't it? Yeah. I was in the car the other day listening to the radio. A song by the Smiths came on, a song called This Charming Man. And uh, the lyrics go, Punctured bicycle on a hillside desolate. <laughs> and I, I realised all through my teenage years, I'd misheard that as nobody loves you, kill your classmates. <laughs> Amazing what you hear. Yeah. I like to get down. Woo! Yeah. Not down like James Brown. I, I suffer from depression. Uh, uh, take it to the bridge. <laughs> when, when, I'm, when I'm feeling depressed, like I put that up on Facebook because I'm a really needy bastard. And uh, the other day I was feeling a bit sad, feeling a bit down. And my friend Lucy, she saw I was feeling a bit sad. And she did a wonderful thing for me. She sent me a card through the post. And I opened up the card and inside it said, Christian, I hope this cheers you up. And it said, dance, dance like nobody's watching. That didn't cheer me up. <laughs> Just confirmed my suspicion that I'm under constant surveillance. <laughs> I don't, I don't like cards. I hate cards, in fact. I work for a company, right? I work for companies, like 200 people in my company. And you, you, you can't know 200 people, can you? You can't know all their names. I, I don't. I only know the 10 people I work with directly. And yet, every day I'm given a card for somebody's birthday, or their engagement, or a new baby, or some shit like that. And I never know who they are. I never know who these people are. My boss came up to me the other day, and he put a card in front of me, and he said, will you sign this for Alison? I said, I don't know who Alison is. Don't know her from Adam. He said, Alison works upstairs in admin. Today is her last day. She's emigrating to Australia with her boyfriend. We signed the card. I said, I don't know, Alison. I don't least you just sign the card, Christian. <sighs> so, this is what I wrote on Alison's card. <laughs> Dear Alison, this is very difficult to write, as you can understand. <laughs> Today is your last day and emotions are running high. <laughs> Obviously leaving for Australia is the right thing to do. Considering what went on between us. <laughs> I'll always treasure those moments we shared in the staff kitchen, the constant texting, the furtive glances and the fumbling to get out of our clothes in the stationery cupboard. <laughs> I'm just sorry that it had to end this way and that you're leaving with him. <laughs> you were one of my favourites. And I'll always wonder if the little miracle inside you has my eyes. <laughs> Best wishes, Tom from Accounts. Uh, <laughs> Tom got fired. <laughs> I didn't like Tom. <laughs> well, one of the guys I work with uh, directly, his name is Michael, and he's a, a, a fucking idiot. Um, like, he, he has nothing, he's really boring, he's nothing good about him. Uh, uh, but um, the guy said, do you want to, uh, we, uh, he passed his motorcycling proficiency test, and the guy said, do you want to 
sign Michael's card for passing his motorcycling proficiency test. I said, give me the fucking card. Here we go. <laughs> Dear Michael, congratulations on passing your motorcycling proficiency test. As a motorcyclist, you're 30 times more likely to die in a road traffic accident. <laughs> the only way I could be happier for you is if I needed a kidney. <laughs> Best wishes, Christian. Guys, I've been Christian Talbot. Enjoy the rest of the show. Cheers. Take care. Christian Talbot! <laughs> All right. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the Comedy Store has a fine tradition of encouraging newer acts and giving them a shorter slot on a Friday or Saturday night. That's Christian's first time doing a Friday night at the Comedy Store. I think you did great. I think you did great. Because, you know, you guys can be as in, you can be, you can be pretty intimidating, you guys. Pretty intimidating audience. I mean, look at this guy. Look at this guy fucking looking at me, just fucking staring into my soul. This fucking guy. Just imagine walking out and seeing that guy and just going, holy shit, I've got to ent entertain this guy. What's your name? Ricky. Yeah. Fucking great name, Ricky. <laughs> Do you have a middle name, Ricky? Alexander. Alexander. <laughs> fucking gets better, Ricky. What's your surname, Ricky? Sure, sure fucking...